Greetings, everybody. How are you guys feeling today? Yeah, it's Indigenous Peoples Day, something to celebrate. We're still here. It's a good thing. And more importantly, we're still here defined by what we as a people define ourselves by. And a lot of that is this culture you're seeing. The songs, the dances, the language we're sharing, the different things that make us who we are. We have to remember that for a long time, our people were studied. They were looked at like they were not human beings. The Doctrine of Discovery was written, and it viewed us not as human beings with humanity, but as mere inhabitants of this land, like the animals and the trees, things that didn't have a true connection of mind, body, and spirit. That being said, we know that these plants and animals, that they do have a spirit, a mind, and a body, that they are also sacred. So not only was that wrong, but it was also wrong to assume that we did not have a humanity, that we were not people, because we've been here since time immemorial. We've been here as people enjoying each other, as friends, as families, as individuals, as tribal nations, as sovereign people. So my people, we come from what is now referred to commonly as San Diego County, the city of San Diego. That's where my people come from, the Kumeyaay Nation. However, the modern United States-Mexico border cuts my nation right in half. So as we celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, we have to remember that a lot of these boundaries, a lot of these these lines that we see in the dirt today, that they're not real, they're very new to our people, they're very new to this land. That international border is very new. My people have been living there for tens of thousands of years. That border was just put in. That, that idea that you have to choose one side or the other was just given to my grandparents' generation, where they had to decide, do we live on this side of the border or that side of the border? And when they made that decision, it meant their kids would either be Mexican citizens or American United States citizens. And so my, my family, we're American citizens, uh, but again, we have family, we have relatives on that side of the border, and that's since time and memoriam. We don't know how long ago. Our people say we were created from the very earth down there, and there's stories that talk about how we were created, how the trees were created before us, how the plant life, how all the animals were created prior to us. We have stories that explain to us how the cosmos work. We are a people that have always known that all the energy and all the things that make us up come from the stars. And that when we pass on, all of that energy is returned to the stars. So our stories talk about our cosmology. They talk about the stars and the constellations. We know that this earth is not flat. For thousands of years in our societies, we talked about in our stories how things are cyclical. Our songs, our storytelling, cyclical. When we do things, we'll do things in a rounded time. We'll do things in a circular motion. Our designs, all done in a way that reflects the mathematics that we all commonly know today. And we know that this world is not flat. So things like that, our people have held on to that knowledge for thousands and thousands of years. And the way that we've transmitted that knowledge is from one elder down to the next generation down to the next generation, to the little kids, all the way down to the babies. And so as a people, we're a thriving, learning force. When you're a young baby, you're hearing our stories, you're hearing the rhythm that is our people. That is a rhythm that we were masters at walking in the rhythm of nature that allowed us to live where we lived for those thousands of years. And not surviving, but thriving and enjoying life to the point where we could create beautiful songs that display this knowledge, beautiful storytelling that displays this knowledge. So today, I'm honored to be here to represent my, my tribal community, the VAS Band, the Kumeyaay, to, uh, to represent my nation, the Kumeyaay Nation, a sovereign nation, a nation that has sovereignty that predates the United States. Thousands of years ago, we would have family leaders who represented and spoke on our behalf. And those family leaders would gather together with the various bands and they would represent their areas. And then those leaders would represent the whole area. And that's how we practice what we now call democracy down there in Southern California. A sovereignty that's thousands of years old. So all of this is encapsulated and it's been shared generation to generation. And one of the ways that we have locked that in to our people's knowledge is by putting it to music. And we are told that the knowledge that's in these songs, that the songs themselves, the rhythm, everything that you see, is part of our story, and that's given to us by the Creator. These are not created by us 
or our ancestors. They were given to us by the Creator for our people so that we could live with each other in harmony and in a good way, treat each other with respect and enjoy life. And so today, in Indigenous Peoples Day 2022, we're still here, we're still enjoying life. It's a good day. In our language, say, It's a beautiful day today that we're getting to see. It's a beautiful day. We're going to share some of, uh, some of our bird songs with you. They're in our language. They tell little stories. And that's those stories, that is our history. That is our oral tradition. And if we were to share the whole song cycle, we would sing throughout the day. We would sing throughout the night. And tomorrow this time, we would still be singing, telling those stories of long ago, of our creation, of our relationship to one another, and to our relationship to the earth that has taken care of us. The earth predates us. And so we have to always remember that, that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. The earth will be here, but will we be here? We have to take care of this earth and honor that, that relationship. So these songs, they talk about that. It's only one song cycle of more than a dozen song cycles that our people have. There's some from the Grand Canyon all the way down into Mexico, from the Colorado River all the way to the Pacific Coast. These are the songs of Southern California. So again, it's an honor to show who we are a little bit as people. And this is a celebration. A thousand years ago, we were celebrating. Today, we're still celebrating. And so we'll sing a couple, and I'll explain a little more. Hope you guys enjoy it. Again, Kumiai, shot to cook. So you'll notice the dancing that we do, it's not 
as flamboyant as some of the other nations that you see real fast and, and uh, you know, ours is very kind of slow and it kind of warms up. And that's because when we're back home doing this, we do this throughout the night. We start to slow into it. And then the community builds, they start to come out and they dance. And then we go and we go and it starts to speed up and starts to get more intense. But these dances are designed to be done throughout the whole entire night. And they're designed for our young, young ladies to take part and for our oldest elders to be able to come out and enjoy it also. So it's a community thing. But you'll notice it looks like they're walking. They're walking in place. And the meaning behind that for us is that we are walking in the footsteps of our ancestors. That's a reminder. So as we dance, the dance itself is part of our story. The words tell a story. As we're singing these songs, the inflection, the way we sing it, the speed, tempo, the emotion behind it, it tells part of that story. In the same way as when you're watching a movie, they, they play the little scary music, you know something bad's gonna happen. Or the same way they play the funny music, you know it's meant to be humor. For us, these songs, the tone of it tells a little bit of the story. And then the dancing, the dancing tells the story that's behind those words. And so all of that is a reminder that we as people, we are not flat objects, that we are three-dimensional. There's a lot to us. There's a lot to every one of us, good and bad. And we have to navigate that. As families and as people, things aren't always easy. Things aren't always hard. We have to navigate these things. And so what we find in this song and in the storytelling is our philosophy as a people. It guides us to remind us who and how we, sh we are and how we should operate as an individual and as a person. And so since time and memoriam, these are the lessons that we teach our youngsters as they're learning these throughout time. You know, to watch out for things like, like arrogance and ego, to watch out for things like greed and want, to try not to gossip and speak bad about one another. And these are all things that our people suffer with today because we are a people who have had trauma inflicted on us. Those are all things that happen to people when they feel insecure. And when you go to a people and you, and you put them down and you make them feel bad and you tell them their culture and their belief system is wrong and flawed and you punish them and you kill them for being who they are, what happens is you have a communal lowering of self-esteem. And that takes generations to build yourself out of that. The same way as you take a little young child and you hurt that child, they grow up as a hurt individual and they hurt somebody else. And so that hurt and that harm becomes generational. So as indigenous people, one of the things we have had to deal with is healing ourselves, to work our way out of these traumas, these generational traumas. This culture helps us do that. It reminds us that that's not the way we should be living. We should be living in balance. So with all of that, this right here is our healing. It's our medicine. It's things that make us feel good. It empowers us. It reminds us who we are. And even though the first governor of this state of California said there would be a war of extermination on the Indian people, and they did try to do that, they failed. And so today, Indigenous uh, People's Day, we're here celebrating that that was a failed a failed campaign that not only are we here physically but we're here in our spirit we're here in our mind and we're here saying this is who we are as indian people so this is all part of it hope you guys are having a good time ladies and gentlemen we're going to share some more Hey, I'm 
storytelling we talk about the various animals that are in our areas we say some guide us they tell us things are coming they're messengers we have some that tell us about what goes on in our communities and we have some that teach us they're the great teachers and we say we learn from those animals not to be like that you know but we have that in us we all have things in us that are exemplified by those animals and so some of our dances are actually shooing some of those animals away and so if you ever see online or, or uh, go to a powwow in Southern California, you'll see the bird songs and dances. A lot of times you'll see our dancers, our men out there, and they're grunting and they're dancing. And what we're doing is we're unifying the people. We're creating a cadence. And as we're all on different steps in life, you hear that, huh, 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 huh. We're putting everybody on that same step. So we're all together. We have strong unity. And then also what we're doing is we're pushing out all that bad all of the stress that people brought there. Every time you go somewhere, you know, no matter where you're at, whether you're here, cultural event, you're at Disneyland, you're at a, whatever, you're at a concert, you know, it's hard to let go of all your stress and just have a good time. Just enjoy what you're doing there. You know, did, the, did I turn the oven off, you know? Uh, when I get back, I'm gonna be tired tomorrow. I can already feel it, gonna be tired going to work tomorrow. Those kinds of things. But we have to push that out and say right now in this moment, Right here, we have to enjoy life. We have to enjoy what we're doing. And so we push that out. And when you're out there really feeling good, a lot of times there's somebody watching you. 
And they may not enjoy that you're feeling good. And we feel that and we see that. And man, that's, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy myself. I'm trying to enjoy my life. Don't be hating on me. But haters are going to hate. So we tell, in our old way, we say, push that out. We want goodness right here. So we push that out. Huh, huh, we push that out. And we just have goodness right here. And we're, even for that moment, we as a community, we're united. You have people who don't like each other. Families have drama. We're human beings, so we all have that. But in that moment, our ancestors gave us that little bit of medicine right there to be positive, to feel good about ourselves. And that strengthens our bodies. It heals our minds and our spirit. And sometimes you have a strong, really harsh, stressful week. Doing this on the weekend really makes you feel good. It takes you right back to your roots. And so again, uh, that's part of our healing. So you'll see some of that dancing here in the middle. So in our culture back home, we're taught in our traditional teachings that we honor our women. We're taught that we honor and treat our girls right. And they back. And so in our traditional teachings, we do have a duality of things. And it's not to be identified by the way we think of things today. It's an older way of looking at things. But you see that in our dance, where we have the women and we have the men kind of going back and forth like that. And the motion that our that our tribe learned that from was from the ocean. We learned how the, the movement of that ocean is very dynamic, and that it cleans that soil back and forth, back and forth like that. And that is what we do for our community. We come out here, we bring everyone back together, we move back together, back and forth like that as a community. And over a period of time, all hard things, all bad things, they tend to wash themselves out over time. And again, a thing of unity, bringing everybody together 
And so this is a social time for us. We sing these songs in ceremony. We sing these songs in sad times and we lose people. We believe we actually dance them to the other side, to our heaven. We dance them there. It's not really a heaven as, we would just, as many people would think of it, but we have our belief on that. But we say they don't just walk there. They're walking, they're dancing. They're enjoying themselves as their only way to see the Creator. In the same way that we, even though life can be struggle, life can be hard, we're supposed to take that time to turn on that jam in the, in the car and enjoy life. We're supposed to be having a little beat to our step. And so no matter how good or how bad life is, we should be enjoying it. Because that's a gift from our Creator to us. And so we sing these songs on all those occasions. Sad times, very sacred times of prayer, and then our social times. And so you'll see amongst our people, people out there dancing, having a good time. We see men and women coming together, dancing with each other. You'll just see all of us really jiving as a people. It's a very a beautiful thing to be part of. I've been learning this for the last 40 years of my life. I've been learning these songs like this, taking part in the learning process. Back home, we have about 20 young men that are learning these songs. There are different stages of it. Some are just coming into it. Some have been doing it their whole life. Some are about to become leaders in it. Some may never be leaders, but they're enthusiasts and they enjoy it. And we appreciate them too because they help the process of this. And so it's an ongoing part of our culture. And so hopefully one day you guys will get a chance to go down there and actually see it live right there in, in like San Diego, SoCal, Kumiai territory. Kumiai Nyamut, where we're from, our people's land.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to sing one more song. But again, I just want to remind you that today is a good day. And part of that is because we as a people did have to endure so much. You know, this is an honor to be out here to sing and share this with you. Something that generations past didn't always have the privilege to do. Down in San Diego, our elders for a few generations, they weren't able to really bring this forward out into the public. They put it into secret, they put it into hiding to protect it. Because at one point in our area, if you went out and sang these songs and did these things, you could be persecuted for it. People lost their life sharing culture. So it was just something you'd bring out and let everybody see and show. These things were kept very secretive, very hidden to protect them so that we could get them to the next generation. It wasn't until the 1980s, I was a little guy, and the elder at that time said to his students, the men, you need to start sharing these songs, these dances out and about, not just to our own people, but to everybody else, so they can see that we're still here. And not only are we here, but what do we look like? Because as Kumeyaay people, as California Indians, you know, we don't have the same culture as our brothers and sisters, middle of the country, the Plains Indians. We don't have the same culture as our, as our friends in Navajo or those in Canada or those South, South America. We're all, in, we're all distinct people. Every nation, every tribe has their own ways. They have their own characteristics that makes them unique. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So what, what do we look like? Who are we? And so at that time, they said, we need to go out. We need to share. We need to share a little bit. We need to remind these people that we're still here. They didn't get rid of us. And so in the 80s, we started to bring these songs out, these dances. We share at the museums, at the colleges. And it was very common for, for educated people to come up to us and say, wow, we didn't even know that there's still natives around here. And these are people that are, quote unquote, educated by the institutions of this land, the university systems. And if they did know that we're here, they were very, very flawed in their understanding of us and what we ate, our, our social practices. A lot of the ideas they had were developed coming out of the 1800s when archaeology and all of those, uh, those thought processes were put together. It was put together in the idea that a person is better than another person. That our way was primitive, like we're some kind of primate. And that we're not, we're not uh, civilized, we're not the peak of civilization. That's not our way of believing. We believe that we're all brothers and sisters in this, we're all even. We have different ways of doing things because we come from different lands. Some of us come from where it's really hot, really dry, really cold, really windy. So our culture is different because our environment's different. Creator gave us different things to survive in those environments. Makes us a little different from one another as people, but it doesn't make us better than anybody else. So again, a reminder, it's Indigenous Peoples Day. We're still here, we're loving it. I'm loving all these other tribes showing their way. It's good to be here in Ohlone territory and all the neighboring tribes that are here. We're guests here. I'm a guest here just like everyone here. We're all guests and it's good to be here. So thank you. 
to all those in the audience that are from this area, and thank you to all your ancestors for allowing us to have our songs here today. Yay, hun. We'll sing one more song and, we'll, and we're gonna pass on the mic.